right, so here I am now in uh, section 11.4 in the text called Air Resistance. And so I'm going to pick up exactly where I left off in the previous screencast um, where we had wrote a function. Um, so we were looking at the case of free fall and vacuum. So the only force acting on our object was that due to gravity. And we had our code set up so that, um, you know, the issue with ODE45 is you need to specify time uh, range to solve over. We had the code set up so that it would solve for the time it takes to make uh, impact with the ground uh, and then report back the trajectory um, over that range. And so what we want to do is build off of that code that we started in the last screencast, uh, but now add drag. Okay. And so I emphasize I'll start or I'll keep working with this code in the screencast and where we left off in the screencast. And so the code might look a little different than um, what appears in the text um, as I'm you know, working through it here in the moment. So as we had drag, the key with drag is that my drag force is going to be proportional to uh, velocity squared. Uh, so C is a constant, we'll call it our uh, drag constant. Um, and we're told to use a value of C of 0 0.2. And then uh, to get this into, or into our uh, equations of motion, um, you know, so we already have force due to gravity in there. Right, and so our force due to gravity is m times g, um, but what we actually need uh, in our differential equation is acceleration, right? And the relationship between force and acceleration uh, is Newton's second law, right? And so uh, we'll do the same thing for drag. Once we have the drag force, we can calculate the acceleration due to drag as f over m, um, and we're told for this problem to use a mass of uh, 75 kilograms. Okay, and so without further ado, uh, let's go back um, over to MATLAB and update our code. Okay. Uh, so this is the file um, we were working on last, um, and so you can you know, download it from our previous screencast, and I'll include it uh, here as well. Okay, and so what we want to do is update this for the case of uh, wind resistance. Okay. And actually, before I... Um, get to that, let me just type in T end and V end. So when we were descending in vacuum, um, the time it took to hit the ground was approximately 28.6 seconds. And our velocity was approximately negative 280 meters per second. Okay, and so we'll use this as a comparison uh, to our updated code. Okay, so I'm just going to save this free fall nest. So let's call this free fall nest uh, and let's add air to it. Okay. So air up here. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, when I add drag, all that's going to change is our rate function, the acceleration. Right, so we have a constant g. We'll need our drag constant, which we're told to use a value of 0 0.2. Actually, let me go ahead and maximize this again. So if I, yeah, so top function, you know, nothing's going to change there. Um, air function, nothing's going to change. All we need to change or update is a rate function. So I have our drag constant uh, mass, which is 75 kilograms. Okay. And so I've been solving everything in SI units. Um, so I don't have to worry about convergence and things of that nature. So dz dt will still be v, uh, but dv dt is going to be uh, negative g. Um, and then we need to add to a drag. And so drag will be a positive uh, c times uh, v squared divided by mass. Okay. So the drag is going to be positive, and we'll get to this more later when we model 2D trajectories. Uh, and so the idea is your drag's always going to act in the opposite direction of uh, your velocity. So in this case, our object is always descending, so our drag is moving in the opposite direction. It's going to be positive, whereas gravity is negative, uh, it's moving down. Okay. So I believe that's all that we should need to update. So if I restore this... Okay. Actually, let's go ahead and we can... Let's see if this works. <laughs> so if I go ahead and I first run free fall nest. Okay, oh, shoot. 
trying to copy and paste. So if I run freefall nest, I'll add a V here for vacuum. Okay. I have those two. Oops. What I'm going to try and do is let me go to air resistance. Change this to red. Let's add a hold on. So figure one, we want to hold on. Figure two, I want to hold on there too. Okay. So if I go ahead and run this, um, same thing with air resistance. So I'm going to copy and paste. <laughs> I guess I could have clicked up. And so change vacuum to A for air, and then this becomes free fall nest air. So I'm hoping with the hold on, um, everything shows up on there. Uh, I have an endpoint air. So uh, what this is suggesting to me is I have an air using F0 line 290, so that's within F0. Function values at the interval in points much differ in sign, and then it tells me where exactly it happens here. And so what I'm suspecting is um, when I'm descending in vacuum, so what I'm anticipating is when I have air resistance, my descent's going to be much slower, right? I have this drag force acting in the opposite direction. So this brackets I'm using in F0 um, was based on this 30 seconds was in vacuum. Um, we knew that that was just past the time it took to hit the ground. So it's probably or what I am fairly certain is happening here is that at 30 seconds my object still hasn't hit the ground. So what F0 is going to do is it's going to try and evaluate my air function at these two endpoints first and confirm that they bracket. And so chances are here it's going to have a positive height and then at 30 it's less a positive height hasn't hit the ground yet. Um, so let's go ahead and change that. Uh, NumLock's not on. Let's change that to 90. Okay, and rerun it. Okay, hey, so it works. Hey, and it actually works too. Um, well, <laughs> it works too that uh, it, with the hold on that it plots on those same figures. So red is now with air resistance, so it takes much longer to hit the ground. So if I come over here and I get TA end, all right, so with air resistance it takes 70.2693 seconds to hit the ground. That's double um, as compared to when I was in vacuum. Final velocity is negative 60 meters per second. If you're negative 61 in vacuum, it was about negative 280. All right, so my velocity is now much lower when I make impact, and the time uh, is much longer too. Okay. Um, we also see some cool behavior over here in the velocity, where it looks like the descent may be fairly linear initially, um, but then it plateaus and my velocity becomes constant. All right, so after some short period of time, I reach my terminal velocity. Um, so that's going to be when the net force acting on your object, uh, so gravity and drag uh, in this case, would be exactly uh, equal to each other. And that's what I've been told makes skydiving uh, so fun. All right, cool. Nice. All right, and uh, so again, that's uh, position, and then this is going to be your, your velocity. Okay, um, and so that's how we would, you know, update and add. Uh, drag. Cool. Uh, from here, I'm going to keep building up this code. Uh, I won't look at, I think it's the next couple of examples we just play with this code. I'll just go and I'll implement the, the parachute so we have the same uh, cohesive example of building off of this code.